the biggest upgrades, the coolest toys, and why the hell did I buy another 24 millimeter G Master? All of this new gear pickups in this April edition of Hashtag Too Much Gear. Please shop responsibly. At first on the list, I got this popcorn chicken rice set with an orange juice drink for about $20. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, for reals, the first item on the list is the Aperture Amaran P60C video light panels. You can get one for about $349 or a set of three for about $1,000. Now, full disclosure, Aperture, this send this out to me in support of this big project that I'm doing with Professor Heinz. We're gonna be doing a full blown, full process, ultimate guide to street photography. It's gonna be a one plus hour long free course where we take the viewers behind the scene to show you guys how we capture street photos as well as post process them. Video is going to be dropping hot in April. It's going to be available here on my YouTube channel. So hopefully you guys can check it out. It's going to be awesome. But anyways, I've used these lights to light the interviews and the editing portion of that video. And you should be seeing it on the screen right now. We have a day portion as well as a night portion. And ooh, look at that fireplace looking so schmacky. Woo! It's a simple three lighting setup. So we got the hair light right here. We got the key light right here. And we got the fill light right here. Now, I'm not gonna do a full blown review on these lights just because there's just so many good ones out there already. Jarrow one done did it. Uh, DSLR video shooter Caleb already did it. So go check them out. Uh, but in this portion of the video, I just wanna share with you guys my experience using the P60Cs. So for one, I just love how slim they are. It just looks like I can just throw it into my check in case cushion with some clothes and uh it should be fine right haha -ha. and uh if you get the kit you also get this big ass case here as well um there's no way in hell i'll be paying the check-in fee for this case right here so i'm gonna have to abandon this case here in new york city so i'm gonna see if i can bring this with me on our travels for the year just by tucking the three lights into my main check-in case so that we can always have a mobile youtube studio lighting setup wherever we go because these look really really good but i love I love how each light also comes with their own little soft boxes and grids to help soften and centralize the light. However, a lot of the reviews are correct. Uh, these lights can be pretty harsh even when you put the soft box and the grid on. A lot of the reviews have recommended to get like a cheapo umbrella and just stick it onto the light bracket to help soften the light even more. So I may pick that up. But the fortunate thing about my quote unquote YouTube New York kitchen set here is that there's a giant white wall just like onto the side right here. So I'm just able to just blast that light to bounce that light back into my face, creating a nice soft even lighting that you're seeing right now. Now, in case you didn't know, the C in the P60C stands for color. I'm not a huge RGB kind of guy, but it's just nice to have that color option to match a certain scenes whenever I might need it to. But if you don't need all that color, you can actually get the P60X instead, which is just by color and only $100 cheaper. Man, all this talk about P60X just reminded me of those app infomercials. You remember those, the P90X? Gosh, was it like 10 years ago man i'm old now if you're watching this and you're older than me i do apologize i mean no offense to that <laughs> But man, a decade is a long time. All right, so let's go ahead and bring it back to the lights. These Amaran lights can actually take the big Sony NPF batteries. So it can actually make the lights a lot more mobile. And on top of that, you can actually charge those batteries at the same time when you have it mounted to the lights, when you have the lights plugged into an AC power. That is actually really neat. But unfortunately, I don't have any of those batteries on me at the time of recording. But the most game changing thing to my entire workflow with these lights is that I can now control them individually with an app on my phone. So check this out. I can actually come to my key light right here and just change it to a, a different color. I can make this blue. I can make this yellow. I can make this red. Ooh, bat Ooh, Batman. I am vengeance. And this is just really awesome because I can just increase the intensity or just lower it if I needed to without having to get up and go to the back of the light and just adjust the knob. And to do this, you're gonna need an app called Sidus Link, which is incredibly easy to pair. It just takes a few seconds to reconnect once all the lights are turned on and you boot up the app. Man, there's just so many things I haven't even touched on yet just simply because I haven't even had the chance to check them out. But there are things like green and magenta tint balance or saving a different profiles to the back of the numbers here and sapping colors from an 
image off of your phone and setting those data colors over to these lights so they can reproduce those same colors. But anyways, uh, check out some of the other reviews. I promise you, you'll learn way more about these lights, but I'll have an update to what it'll be like to travel with these lights in the coming months or so. Now to hold these lights, I picked up some light stands from B&H and that's sort of the dangers when you're staying at an Airbnb that's really close to B&H. It has been incredibly detrimental to my wallet. 30 minute superstore pickup may just be worse than Amazon same day prime shipping. It's just too damn easy. <laughs> So I already have one Manfrotto Nano Light stand that I brought with me that I bought years ago. And I like it so much for its travel form factor that I bought the carbon fiber version and paid the premium price. $165 versus $70 if I were to pick up another non-carbon fiber version. So the carbon fiber Nano stand is 1.65 pound or 0.75 kilogram, whereas the regular version is 2.12 pound, 0.96 kilogram. But here's my thought process, right? Every gram can counts when you're traveling. One pound can be the difference between a free check-in case and the shame of having to repack your entire case at the airport. I definitely do not want to be that guy on the side having to repack my case. Done it before, narrowly missing my flight one time. So the question is, is it worth getting the carbon fiber version? <sighs> Maybe that's sort of a steep price just to save 0.5 pound. But if you're not flying like me, I think you can just get the non-carbon fiber version and save yourself the money. Now I have three lights and two stands so far. After burning $165 on that carbon fiber nano stand, your boy needs to soften the blow on his wallet. So I ended up picking a $32 impact light stand instead. And boy, let me tell you, this thing is awesome. This thing can go up to eight feet, something that I wish I can be so I can live out every Asian man's dream to dominate NBA. And this thing here has built-in air cushions, so you have that extra two seconds to narrowly escape from missing a chunk of your finger should you forget to tighten the knob. Now, in case you don't know why certain light stands tout the air cushion feature, it just means it will gradually descend down instead of just straight dropping if you didn't tighten the knob enough. You should have seen my face when I saw this impact light stand at B&H. I was like, what the f It's just $32 and they can do all of this? And the crazy thing is the overall weight of the impact light stand it's just a little over two pounds, very similar to the non-carbon fiber version of the nano stand. Granted, it doesn't fold up as nicely as these nano stands or as compactly. Anyways, I'll report back on the possibilities and the potential struggles that I will run into when I travel with these lights and light stands in next month's video. All right, this next thing that I have here is the GoPro Hero 10 Photography POV Kit. This whole thing costed me $692. So I wasn't a fan of the nine. I bought two of those back in 2020 and used it for only a week and it crashed often. So I was kind of worried about the 10, but so far it's been really, really solid. It. I'm very happy with it. The quality is great. The colors are great. The stabilization is great. It just made me think back to the GoPro Hero 4 Black days. Now I've used the GoPro Hero 4 Black back in the days. I own like three of those and it's just so cool to see how far these action cameras have come. Do you guys remember how you had to use the underwater housing just to mount the GoPro onto something even if you're not using it underwater? But now that mount comes default onto the GoPro itself and by default is waterproof up to a few feet. Anyways, I just find it funny that eight years later, I'm talking about how great it is naked now, but I'm still using some type of encasing for a GoPro, but this one's for a good reason. This is the small rig camera cage, and you'll notice this extra attachment here on the bottom, and that's for the three and a half millimeter audio adapter. So we got this set here for the POV photography portion of that street video that I mentioned earlier. And for audio, we connected the Rode Wireless Go 2 lob on it and mounted the receiver here on the Kochu of the cage. Eh? Eh? Pretty convenient, eh? And for the shoot, actually, I forgot to bring the string loft mic that I would normally use in all of my videos. So I kind of had to rely on the transmitter of the row, the square thing by itself. And surprisingly, the audio sounded really good. I am very impressed. As for the battery life per battery, we got about an hour-ish shooting 4K 24P recording, which was excellent. It was perfect. Speaking of Rode Wireless Go, I got this. The ZG Cine Rode Wireless Go mic box charger 
charger for $50. This is like an AirPod style charging case. It can charge all three Rode devices at once, which is convenient. Now I know DJI has a new lav mic system that does this too, but unfortunately either that's sold out everywhere or it's not available yet. But I like the Rode Wireless Go system, so I got this. And uh, first impression, it's a lot bigger than I thought. It's a literal size of a canned soda. But it makes sense, you know, it fits all three of the mics here snugly and it's a battery itself. So it seems like you can charge the mics without plugging it in as long as the case has some juice. Now, according to the reviews, it can charge all three devices three times over, which is incredibly convenient. Unfortunately, it's a little too big for me. I have enough cables to charge each of my devices individually. So I just rather save on the back space and we'll be returning this instead. Speaking of updates, I owe you guys a few from the last accessories video that I did. So the gloves that I got were great. Love the index and thumb finger openings. It was incredibly helpful to be able to use my phone and press down on the shutter button of my camera. Though I will say those gloves weren't really that warm. Anything that's above 25 degrees, it's bearable, but anything below that, yeah it's still gonna be pretty cold with those gloves. The puffer was amazing, a best investment. The small rig phone mount, I returned it. Anti-reflection hood for the phone, I returned it. The PGY snap lock system, I've returned it. And thank you to those who recommended the uh, Falcom quick release system for my quick release trouble for my Crane M3. Uh, it looks cool, but unfortunately from their product page, they've already said it won't work with the Peak Design tripod head. Like the plate will go into the Peak Design tripod head, but it won't secure it, so that unfortunately would be a no-go for me. But there was one suggestion in the comments from the last video that I did end up getting, which is this Shure RK345 windscreen replacement for about $15. Now in the last video, I mentioned I got this Shure MV7 podcast mic, which is the USB version of the popular SM7B. The default foam that came with it, unfortunately, wasn't that great. However, so many people recommended that I just get the replacement one for the SM7B, and oh my god, it is a night and day difference. You guys are hearing it now. It is a huge improvement. Now it's not exactly a complete fit. There's really no way to secure this foam on this mic, but hey, it, it looks fine. I mean, you can't even tell in the video, so I guess it's fine. Now I do apologize for the previous few videos. Uh, some of you guys have commented how bad the plosives were. I, I do apologize for that, but moving forward, the audio is gonna sound a lot better. So thank you guys for the suggestion. And for the Shure MV7 mic, I've also picked up this uh, Amazon base six microphone stand for about $25. Now I shouldn't have gotten the tripod bundle with the Shure MV7. It kind of sits a little bit too high for my liking. So I'm using this Amazon stand right here to be able to mount the mic position a little bit lower. It's a cheap old light stand, but it works incredibly well. I actually have one for my home studio back at home. I used it with my SM7B as well as my Sennheiser MKH416. And with the Sennheiser, that tiny little skinny shotgun mic, I'm able to like raise this all the way up and have a tower over me so the mic sits off frame from the camera, which is really nice. I missed that setup so much that I got another one here in New York City. Highly recommend this. Unfortunately, I don't need to, so I'll probably just give this away to a friend here in New York City. And finally, the last thing on the list, the Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master for $1,400. I'm, I'm telling you guys, man, it is so dangerous to stay near B&H. They are literally rinsing me dry right now. Now you might be wondering, why is the 24 G Master on this list? Didn't I already get this lens already? Was, weren't I hyping this lens up like a couple years ago? What happened to it? <sighs> yes. Yes, I did. But then 2020 happened, and like many other creatives and freelancers, jobs were getting canceled, weddings were being postponed, and I'm just like, man, what am I, what am I gonna do? <laughs> so my thought process was like, okay, let's try to sell some things, save some money, and ride out the storm just to see what happened, just in case, you know. So I was able to sell my 24G Master along with many other gear. And to my surprise, during the whole pandemic, people's spending habit actually went up, which was great for me because I had a lot of things to sell. Obviously, things are better now. We're traveling a lot more doing this whole nomadic thing, and I miss the 24G Master. I literally rewatched my own video and influenced myself to get the 24G Master again. But I love it so much. I love the image quality. I love the F1.4, and I've even mentioned it in my 2019 video that it is incredibly handy to use the 1.4 just to blow or out the background, you know, because we're here at these Airbnbs at these hotels, and these aren't really studios, so we 
we have a lot of clutter in the background that I just want to blur out to not distract you guys while you guys are watching this video. And it's perfect for these talking head style videos like this with a 24 millimeter at f1.4. Oh, such a great repurchase. I already put in so much mileage on this lens already. So absolutely worth it to me. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to further support this channel, just simply stick around and listen to what my sponsor Squarespace has to say. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. No coding knowledge whatsoever. Perfect for people like me because I just want to make YouTube videos for you guys and not have to worry about coding my entire website. Simply just select one of their templates to get started. Every aspect is easily customizable with their drag and drop feature. Whether you're in need of a portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a simple blog, design it with Squarespace. Use my link down below to test it out. And when you're ready to launch your first website or domain, use my code Jason Vong to save 10% off. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.